Next speaker, PhD Sylvia Nora Kalnic, uh, is one of the authors, idea authors for the uh, very interesting uh, awareness campaign, which is called like Nature Concert Hall. And this is awarded campaign throughout the Europe, but it also says a lot about ways of communication and reconnecting people back to the nature as that was the issue from the uh, previous session. So please, Sylvia, the floor is yours and we continue with the plenary session. Thank you being back and being patient. Thank you very much, Ander, for the introduction. Um, it's my great pleasure to be here today and to um, tell you about uh, what we particularly do in Dubis Concert Saal to connect people better and more with nature. So I think uh, a lot of us have, uh, the people speaking before, were talking about their personal experiences of connecting to nature and also uh, talking about the challenges that we have um, before us, trying to bring people back into nature and to give them the opportunity uh, albeit uh, a small tree or, or, or something larger, to enjoy this. So, in regards to the Nature Concert Hall, we also had certain challenges from different groups that we wanted to address. Our musicians were looking for inspiration. So all of us, I'm sure, have favorite songs about love, about um, something more animalistic than love. Um, and other things, but, uh, but there's also inspiration, a lot of inspiration in nature. And musicians were looking for something that was not so standard and something that they could get inspiration for, and they were thinking that nature could be one of those things. Um, our scientists were thinking about how sometimes when you come um, to the public, it's very difficult to get their attraction and to get their engagement, because scientists have a tendency sometimes, not all, but to speak in very complicated manner and not be able to find the particular words to meet the audience's attention. And the third was uh, uh, not policymakers, uh, but wanting to stimulate change in human behavior, but also different project managers, I'm sure, as, as uh, people that manage parks, you know there's many projects you get involved in, and there's certain standard ways of communicating brochures, seminars, workshops, um, newsletters, and how to engage your public. And we were kind of looking at a different way to do this. And so we were looking for this way that we could actually change the default setting uh, back to maybe that which is the hunters and gatherers, um, which is about sustainability. So bringing it back to, to my, the previous speaker before the coffee break, really getting back to our, like he's called it factory setting, I call it default setting. So going back to our perceptions, which for many years has been about uh, sustainability and recognizing the sustainability in our work and our lives. And now the, um, over the years, uh, it's fi um, 15 years next year, now our event has evolved from, from um, us wanting to reach specific things to it being a demand-driven event where our audience are searching for knowledge on how to take concrete actions in nature management and they come to our event to learn these things and looking for other people looking for ent entertainment, a peaceful experience, looking for new nature territories to, to explore and to enjoy. So what exactly is Davis Concert Zale? So Davis Concert Zale means exactly that, it's Nature Concert Hall. And uh, it, uh, uh, part of the evolution was our feeling that it's not necessary to build concert halls all over our countries, but we can just go out into nature where the musicians felt there's a natural acoustic ability in nature that we can enjoy and temporarily set up to have that engagement. So it was conducted from 2006, and we have it in two new locations each year in Latvia. And yes, Latvia is big enough to have, have two new locations each year, I know, for, for 15 years. And it's organized in several parts. So it's about people learning, 
and it's about people experiencing and being able to tap into people's um, emotions to get them to do something. So empathy is, for us humans, it's a natural thing that we do. We don't even think about it. And we, as people who want to get others to protect nature, we have to tap into that empathy and to tap into that feeling to make people actually do something because they have emotional connection and feelings for that particular thing. So our event is organized in three parts. The first is usually three hours during daylight. Um, in Latvia, we have lots of daylight in the summer. So three, and we have about 20 workstations where there's an interactive way that people can engage on a particular topic that year. And then um, the event, which is um, on the stage part of the, of the event uh, place, is a 10-minute discussion between the scientists and the audience. So we bring the key scientists of that year to the stage, and we present the key ideas that we hope the people have captured through the workstations. So it's just to re-emphasize what are the particular things on that topic that year, and then this is again re-emphasized in an hour-long uh, multimedia concert where people get to feel and get that emotional connection. And by that time, it's dark in Latvia. So it's usually around 11 p.m. in the summer. But so the concert actually happens in the dark. But it together is the event, so including the educational. So, it, as I mentioned, it's already been 15 years of building understanding on the different uh, nature values that we have. And uh, we, every year, choose a different species. And here you can see some of the different topics that we've had and different ways that we've wanted to emphasize certain connections that people have with nature. For instance, in regard to agriculture, we had uh, Bombina Bombina, stressing the fact that there is a need for um, agriculture and for there be, to be a manure pile that the bombina bombina needs so that it can um, attract the insects that it would like to eat. Um, then looking at different things like a manor park and the Osmoderma eremita, um, and that being a specific species uh, um, uh, spot that the Osmoderma eremita needs to be. The Baltic Sea and the Focus Vesicolosus, talking about water quality, um, talking about air quality, looking at lichen and different meadows and different species. So we're looking at both popularizing less known species, protecting specific habitats like the manor parks, for instance, in the Baltic Sea, and educating on simple uh, environmental indicators such as lichen in the forest. Also looking at positive interaction between human activity and nature. So really saying that, yes, nature needs to be protected, but nature thrives also on the involvement of people. So uh, one example, of course, are our meadows. So we use our meadows, but actually the use of meadows can make the communities and the biodiversity within the meadow thrive. Um, different preservation issue, conf and confronting preconceived mi misconceptions. So one year we had our beautiful uh, bat species, um, and uh, it was really talking about the myths and the, and the issues that people have uh, against bats, to encourage people to feel grateful and thankful, not only for the stork, I don't know if you've heard about Latvians, how much we love our storks, and uh, if it lands and, and, and makes a nest in your, uh, in your um, home or around in your farm, it's considered a good luck symbol. So that is like a great way to keep people from uh, harming the storks. But bats don't have that good omen around them generally. So it was about disbanding the myths about bats being something horrible so that people would feel grateful and not close off their uh, barnyard uh, um, attics and their um, uh, storage uh, places in the in the farms, and then looking at presenting also complex co uh, concepts. So we had the concept of the chloroplast, and looking at the the uh, how alive every green piece we have is, 
and how we need to protect it because it provides us the air that we breathe. So what are, how, do, how does it work and, and why it is successful? So I think one of the things that uh, makes it successful is that we do have this mutual interest um, from all of those who we involve, so scientists, educators, the musicians, the different artists that we have. Um, they have a mutual interest to make their idea clear. And because each year we concentrate on one topic, all these different people come together to focus and really bring home to the audiences that one topic and what makes that one topic special and great, your best friend by the end of the concert. And you want to protect your best friend after you get that far, right? Um, then uh, we do have a commitment to the idea, uh, the fact that this uh, empathy is an important aspect and that we need to educate people so that we uh, have a sustainable development approach in everyday life, in our choices. So, um, for instance, with Madara Cosmetics, that you actually do make that choice to choose that kind of cosmetic um, rather than another. And you think about these choices in your everyday life. And we also keep it very much uh, free, free for experimentation. So that's one thing that the people that we work with, what we enjoy is that we really can every year experiment on stage design, on different video, dance, etc., and just make every year a new, um, a new uh, event. And then we also use informal platforms. We work all throughout the year, going in the field, meeting with different scientists. We have r excellent cooperation with the, the Conservation Agency of Latvia, who engages us in different events so that we can uh, improve our knowledge. And uh, I already mentioned that we change these topics each year. Um, and of course, we keep our uh, high professionalism, each person in their particular field, to make it a success. Um, I was asked to comment also on youth in Nature Concert Hall. So, so um, youth are a big part of Nature Concert Hall. Uh, if you yourself have uh, teenage children like I, or you, or you know teenage children, then you know that they uh, are always looking for something interesting and something new. And uh, so Nature Concert Hall is one of those places where people come to experience something new. They never know what's going to be the next year. And they, they look for this relaxed atmosphere um, where they can just uh, enjoy. And we also have youth involved because we use volunteers, um, more than uh, 100 volunteers each year. And the uh, event is, is for free, so that's why um, we uh, use these volunteers. And over 60% of our people are under 30. And, um, well, obviously not me. Um, uh, anyway, and also, um, you know, it's, it's a place to be. It's, it's something to be seen. People want to be there because there's an opportunity for photo ops, Instagram, you know. I don't know. My teenagers usually ask me to stand out of the picture. But, uh, but, you know, to have nature around you and interesting videos and interesting lights, uh, um, you know, the uh, youth are totally into that. And also the innovation and experimentation, really, that we have, it also introduces and it gets um, more people engaged from the different professions because they see that we do this experimentation with stage because we have to make sure that the nature is totally untouched. Um, so there's a lot of uh, different elements that we have to consider and that people are interested in being involved also in that respect. So young, young scientists and young uh, architects, etc. So I think, you know, the main thing is that, you know, keeping nature on the mind has to be done by minding the nature. And I think this is a very big um, challenge. And I think sometimes we don't take certain risks. So one, one thing that we do get sometimes criticism from, um, uh, you know, from the side, if people uh, aren't are familiar with the event, is that we're going, bringing too much people into nature or too close to nature. Um, and I think that this is, this is the, the challenge and we have to take on this risk as people that are interested in, in nature protection, that there, you have to bring them far enough to say, that you experience this and see this. And you can do that um, working with the conservation agency as we do in Latvia, with the key scientists that know the topic to say, this is okay. This is okay if you put a light 
on this area for one hour so that those people can understand better this particular topic. It's okay if we have a bit more sound in this particular area for a small period of time, an hour, to be able to get people to have this experience. Because if we keep people away from these places too far, they won't be interested to go in. And these are the kinds of people that um, the, the speaker previous to me before the coffee break was talking about. It's, it's you know, they need to be engaged and, and brought closer. So I think that this is something that we have to be very careful about and we have to be mindful about this responsibility, but it is possible and I think we, we should be open to, to consider this. So it's the calculation of these risks and this compromise. So um, for instance, we had a, a case in the, in the bat year, that's why it's here. Um, so we had uh, in, in the manor house where we had decided to have the bat event um, by absolute miracle, good thing. Um, the scientists had gone a week before to this place and had discovered that in the attic there was a new species uh, uh, that had uh, inhabited the attic. And he phoned us a week before the concert and said, sorry, we can't, what are we going to do? I said, fine, we're going to move the concert. We're going to move the concert to another part of the park where the... Um, the scientists said it's fine because it's not disturbing the, the um, migration and the, uh, the, 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 the traveling of the different, the, the bat species that were there. Um, so these kinds of things, um, it's because we have these scientists involved, so they, they ensure that this hero is not compromised. And uh, sustainable thinking across the board, um, you know, it is about, uh, uh, like Madara Cosmetics mentioned, um, you know, you're, you're trying to make a nature, uh, nature product, then you have to think about everything. So about transportation, uh, encouraging people to go by bike or walking, um, looking at the waste uh, management and looking at the no local economy, making sure that people can benefit from the event. So that's uh, in short what we do. And because it's uh, easy to talk about, but not easy to understand without seeing, and I'm sure all of you will not be able to make it, to Latvia, to the next concert next year. I'm going to show you a video, and that will finalize my presentation. So this is the year of the earthworm.
So thank you so far for very good insight about the awareness uh, connection to the general public. And uh, we already know that there are some questions, but when we restart to the discussion again, what, what do you think is better as one of the previous uh, lecturers told that we should address the same values of the people and, and go where the, their interest is? And if we say that every communication is in the nature, do we address those people who are so far from that and they don't have this habit? So instead of being in nature, maybe come with avant-garde in urban areas and probably really go with different styles of music and try to connect to certain groups which are very far from that mm -hmm. or that's well, the way. Of well, I think that, that that's what we try to do. So, so I, I mean, I couldn't say everything that we do. So, so, but uh, but our event is for free. It's uh, sponsored uh, by different sponsors every year, but also in basis by the Natural uh, Latvian National Nature Environmental Fund. And um, you know, in the first year, it was very important that we have it locally, and we make sure local people come. So we were the green people in the forest. So you're bringing in the local people because th that's their value in the Manor Park, for instance, because that was our first concert. So we wanted to make sure that they come. So we made it for free, so they come. That now, it's a kind of, it's a cultural event. It's a cool thing. So we get the people coming from Riga, from different cities to come, who aren't that familiar with these different nature elements. So yes, the answer is yes, that you, through the different music or the different video, you get the attraction maybe of people that aren't so interested in the nature to start. But by bringing them out, then they get intrigued because then they want to find out more about this particular topic. They, they search for different information and look at the different workstations. So, yeah. But do you believe that uh, changing the style of, uh, of the art performance, let's, let's go for heavy metal music or some kind of underground music will connect to certain groups of people uh, not only to gather around that concept, or th this is the most powerful. Well, I think I think the answer there is is the musicians. So it's interpretation. Mm. So for us, the main thing, uh, like uh, if the musicians were standing here, their main uh, uh, phrase all the time is "We do not lie." Mm. So they do actually, and I know it's hard it's hard to believe. My husband's a musician, and I was very surprised myself but he was le reading dissertations of 200 pages in length on different species to understand the different elements of that species to be able to translate it into music. So the different styles of the music that we have don't appeal to everyone, but the idea is to show that feature um, mm -hmm. species. And I think our biggest compliment is when the main scientist of that particular year comes to us and says, oh my God, You've got it. Because they study that particular species their whole lives. And if they say that that music and that event has captured what they feel about that species, then I think you know, we've, we're there to getting it right also for the people. By the way, I remember the first of those concert halls, the Hermit Beetle, and that was like a central hero. And when somebody in that good communication language started to share the stories that Four years, it's living in the dead tree captivity and eating just that dead tree. And then for two weeks, come out to mate and, and meet some other beetles and uh, probably use the sunshine. How you can harm such an animal who has such a life? Four years eating just the dead wood. I would not uh, dedicate to any of you such kind of life, but then we get this empathy towards the hero and, and the whole concept. And the same but was this year with 24-hour living mayfly. Yeah, but you then uh, mm. should it be free of charge still, or uh, we can uh, ask some money contribution, or uh, we just perceive that this is kind of society duty to bring such a very good concepts free of charge to different people groups. So. Well, I think it was mentioned by the, the representative from the president's uh, chancellery about our South Wales and our constitution. We have a constitutional right in Latvia to be have access to environment. So I think in that respect that in Latvia it's proper to have it for free because it's nature. And I think it's, it's very, um, I think it's uh, 
It's good that we say it's for free because that's a first step to saying it's yours. Take ownership, take care of it. And at our events, we think it works because people go to many events and uh, we have, uh, you know, these kinds of open air events in Latvia, we have a very, very uh, busy schedule in the summer of Latvia. And, uh, and uh, we had one community municipal leader who said he had a hundred people at his Siemens uh, event and so much garbage left. Mm -hmm. After our nature concert event, not one piece of garbage. And, and it was after, you know, 3,000 people were there. So obviously the, the message is coming across. These people are taking more care and thinking about these things. We, we see the worry of the audience that, of course, we use the nature concert hall, the, the best sceneries and the best uh, landscapes, and there are a lot of wildlife uh, just there in behind. And how you ensure that uh, this is not harmed and that there is yeah. not a big impact? So we, we take care. So we do recognize that that is an issue and m many people have this question. So first of all, we always engage from the start of the event till the end. The involved, and it takes eight to ten months for us to organize the next event. So we engage a main scientist who takes care of the different species in the area. We, uh, uh, we cooperate uh, very much directly with the Conservation Agency of Latvia, and uh, we are ready for adjustments. So we don't, um, we don't choose dates and times, except for general summer, um, uh, for our uh, events, until we know what is the best time. So for instance, in the meadow year, it's after there's been plowing. That's the time to be by the meadows, not when, when they're in full bloom, but the plowing is done anyway, and before there, there is another issue, um, looking at the birds, uh, the um, chiff chaff, um, looking, uh, we had one concert in the middle of the night, so that we, uh, we would, the music would end with the rise of the birds. So it was actually started at three, the workshop started at 3 a.m. so that they would, uh, the music would, and the, so the, the, the trouble to the nature would start when it would not be troubled. So we do, there's many ways we do that. I know it sounds impossible, but, uh, but, but it's, it, we do take care. Uh, there are many people who are thinking right now, ah, that's, that's a good idea. I will bring it home and uh, try to do in my uh, national park. What about the budget issues, uh, just roughly, what could be... Uh, the, the budget for such kind of campaign. Well, it's not easy, but <laughs> still. Yeah, yeah. No, so that's a very difficult question because our, our, um, our, the organization, our events, are based on cooperation with municipalities. So um, the artistic side, there is a specific cost to artistic side. Then there is uh, the um, side to the scientific. And then there are different administrative issues that are taken by the municipality. So I can't really say give it a cost, but, uh, but for us, uh, it's uh, between 30 and 45 euro, 45,000 euro mm -hmm. um, per year. And, uh, and this is both for the science and for the, the music and all the video. And then the rest of the uh, co-sponsorship usually comes from municipalities that uh, engage, yeah. So, and uh, just at the conclusion, uh, as this is very powerful using all the modern arts and marketing uh, channels and, and that communication, what would be the address for, uh, for the audience uh, thinking about the everyday uh, communication? This is campaign, this is very powerful and bright, but uh, can we use something from this just on the daily basis with low budgets, or this is really, it should be so bright and so big in scale uh, to make an impact? Well, I mean, I have to say that we didn't start big in scale. So as I mentioned in the beginning, it, kind of the demand uh, grew. So that's why uh, we have to choose now larger places because we started off with only 800 people and now we have 6,000 people at our event each year. But, um, but of course, I mean, I think the key is where it began. The key is to look for innovations and to look at cross-sectoral cooperation. So, I mean, nature people are not alone. I mean, I think a lot of times, and it's, 
kind of what, what uh, my, my friend from Finland was saying. You know, we have to learn how to engage people because a lot of people want to be involved in this and it's becoming even more so, I think. But it's how to engage them and not keep them away from us and to mm -hmm. say, well, we're, we're green people because we do have that. I mean, we ha every single municipality in the beginning when we went to was those strange green people in the forest. We have to come out in the forest, find those partnerships where it works. Like for us, it worked with musicians. Um, then we get dancers, different, like depending on the year. And it just uh, broader and broader the scope and interest of people. So it just shows people want to engage and be inspired by nature and give their inspiration over to the next. We just, you just have to find where to tap into it in your country. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you, Sylvia.